Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 25th January 2020. I am Sagar Nandi. I used to work in information technology, mostly in Singapore. Now I left work. I am living in Thailand and swing trading stocks. I use the Q trading systems and techniques. You may watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel Trading Profitably and contact me on my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share market and stock analysis on my traders forum sagarnandi.com as well as on my Twitter page sagarnandi All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. In today's topics, as usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. After that, I will demonstrate how you can use 360 degrees analysis techniques to find truly high probability low risk trades. These are the trades where you are aligning the forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level and technical level with your trades. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I begin my analysis with oil ETF USO, analyzing it with the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity just in a few seconds. This week, oil dropped heavily. The weekly candle shape is bearish, solid body, and the color, backdrop color, is also bearish, magenta. Relative performance is showing that it is considerably underperforming the market. In the daily, we can see that price dropped heavily. Is it time to short oil? No, it is right at the memory trend line support in the daily chart as well as at a memory trend line support in the weekly chart. These support points are profit booking points for short trades that you might have taken earlier. They are not entry points for new short trades. What is going to be the possible next trade in USO? It's not going to be in the short direction. Price has dropped considerably and it is already oversold for three days as shown by the stretch band indicator. Instead, if price reverses from here, from the auto smart trend lines, I call memory trend lines that are there both in the daily as well as the weekly charts. If price goes up from here, then that may give a very low risk bounce long trade. You may read more about the bounce trade setup and extreme reversal trade setup from the 
learning material I have put together on my forum sakarnandi.com. Before I end my analysis of US oil, let me review what was my analysis in the previous market roundup and how did it play out. In the previous market roundup that was based on last Friday's market close on this day, I mentioned that there was no long trade opportunity. Why? Because the weekly backdrop candle color was still bearish magenta. That is using the daily time interval there was no long swing trade opportunity. At the same time price bounced up from the white direction line and as of that Friday closed above the yellow direction line as well. Based on that I mentioned that the likely direction of oil from there was upside. There was no swing trading opportunity using daily interval but the likely move was to the upside. That was my view one week ago and I suggested you could look for a low risk entry opportunity using intraday that is Q fine tune chart. You could probably look for such a trade on Tuesday. Monday was a public holiday. Tuesday was this day. You could look for a long entry using the fine tune chart template. You would probably close that trade with profit. And then price fail. So you will not look for a long entry any further. Let me explain that Tuesdays long entry that you could take using a systematic discipline approach. This is US oil. Now using the 10 minute interval using the Q fine tune chart template. I use this template for day trading and also for precise entry of swing trades. As you can see this template is very different from the template I use for swing trade entry. All the signals here are zero lag or almost zero lag. That is different from the swing trade entry where the indicators have some lag and that lag is useful for swing trading to avoid noise. For day trading or for precise entry of swing trading, I prefer to use zero or almost zero lag indicators using mostly pivot lines, the horizontal support resistance levels and trend lines, the memory trend lines. On Friday, market closed at this point. On Tuesday, price open here. Monday was a public holiday. Tuesday price opened at the blue pivot level. That was below the red pivot level. That was Friday's close. In other words, on Tuesday price opened with a gap down. Price opened below previous day's low. What happened after that? As price moved, Dynamically, the early range high and the early range low pivot levels formed and on this candle price closed decisively above the early range high. Price opened with a gap down and then went higher and closed above early range high that gave a gap long day trade entry opportunity at this price level. Where would be the stop? Just below early range low at this price point. Where would be the initial profit target? When price goes up enough to cover the risk distance or gives us enough profit and hits a significant pivot 
at a higher price level. On Tuesday, the highest price was at this point, at which point the reward was more than the risk taken in the trade. Following Q technique, you would book at least partial profit at this point. You could also book partial profit at the magenta pivot level by which point significant profit was achieved relative to the risk. After that price fell down, you could exit the remaining position using trailing stop or you could close the remaining position at the end of the day. Why would you close it at the end of the day? Because on the daily chart it was not looking bullish anymore. There was no reason to hold the remaining position overnight as a swing trend. After oil, I analyzed the gold ETF GLD using the same weekly daily at a glance template. In the weekly chart, previous week's candle color and shape both were bullish. This week it went up, ended with a bullish shape and bullish color. The weekly is looking bullish. In the daily chart, in the previous market roundup, I explained that it was near the upper boundary level. Though it was bullish, for swing trading it was too overbought to take a long trade using the daily interval. This week it is remaining at the upper boundary level. It is too overbought to take a long trade using the daily interval. Could we take a long trade on Tuesday? using fine-tuned chart template just like we could take in case of USO and if we did so how would that trade play out? Let me explain that using the fine-tuned chart template. This is GLD this time using the 10 minute fine-tuned chart template. On previous Friday price closed here and on Tuesday price opened at this point the blue pivot level. Soon after that the early range high and early range low lines form. It was a gap down open. The opening happened far below previous day's low, the red pivot. It was a gap down open and what happened after that? At this point price closed decisively above the early range high. That gave a gap long day trade entry opportunity at this price point. Stop would be just below early range low at this point. As I explained in case of USO, you could book profit once the risk distance was covered, which happened by this point. The reward was this much relative to the risk, which was more than the risk and you could book the profit. Alternatively, you could book profit at this magenta pivot level that was a major pivot and already you had significant profit. Probably you had more profit than the risk by that time also. In either case, you would take the long trade at this price point and exit at least partial profit at a higher price point, this point or this point. Price closed at this level what you would do? You would see that the daily chart ended with a bullish connotation and there would not be any reason to exit full position. You could continue to hold the remaining position, continue to hold it overnight, turning it into a swing trade using daily interval. From then onward, price went up more and more 
and as of this Friday you are continuing to hold the remaining position. Both US oil and GLD gave profitable entries on Tuesday in the intended trade direction that was the long direction. In case of US oil you would exit the full position by Tuesday's close. In case of GLD you would continue to hold at least partial position and thereby be able to let profit run. In both cases you could make very precise entry using the fine-tuned chart template. After the commodities analysis, I continue with the market level analysis. The aim of the market level analysis is to decide if the market is bullish or bearish. If it is bullish, I am going to look for only long stock trades. If it is bearish, I am going to look for only short stock trades. If it is neutral, then we may look at the stocks on a case by case basis. We may look for both long or short based on the outcome of the 360 degrees analysis. One week ago, I looked at the market in the market roundup. I saw the weekly candle shape and color was bullish and daily closed at this point. That was also bullish. It was bullish, however, it was overbought, extended to the upside price closed above upper boundary level. Following my technique, I suggested not taking any new long trade. And I mentioned looking at the multiple memory support lines that even if there is a drop in price, the drop may not be much. It will take a lot of effort from the pairs to pierce through so many memory support lines in one go. This week, initially price was steady. On Thursday, price tried to go down, but the daily memory support provided excellent support. The price level of 330 for SPY and 3330 for the S&P 500 futures provided great support and if you notice the memory support was exactly at that level. On Friday price tried to go up but closed lower. The traffic light candle color turned bearish red. The shape is bearish however it also has a lower tail. and price came down with extreme bearish pressure. The volume was high. Though Friday price came down, there are still a number of memory supports nearby. Because of that, I am not going to look for any short trade in SPY right now. And because Friday's candle color turned red, I am not going to look for any long trades as well. A look at the NASDAQ ETF QQQ. The weekly has an indecisive doji shape candle. The color turned neutral. In the daily, on Friday price reversed. However, the traffic light candle color could not turn red. It is remaining yellow neutral. Price is above the upper boundary level. On Friday, price closed with extreme bearish pressure with high volume. It created a reversal candle. However, the weekly volume is pretty low. That was the case in SPY as well. That is expected because Monday was a public holiday. My conclusion is same as SPY. There is no long or short trade signal in QQQ right now. 
Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF Dia The weekly candle shape turn bearish color turn neutral There is a memory support nearby In the daily on Friday price breached one memory support line However, oh, there is another one nearby Friday's candle has a lower tail and also a solid body making the shape indecisive. Extreme bearish pressure on Friday and also a reversal candle. Similar to SPY, there are weekly and daily memory supports that may prevent price from falling sharply. No long or short trade setup right now. Russell 2000 ETF IWM This is the only market ETF where the color, backdrop color in the weekly chart turned bearish. Magenta shape is also bearish. Also it displayed the possible reversal signal, headwind signal in the weekly chart. The next memory support is far away from Friday's closing price. In the daily, on Thursday, these memory supports provided excellent support. On Friday, those two supports were breached. It closed just above another memory support. After that, the next memory support is far away. On Monday or next week, if this memory support is breached, then you may look for a short trade in IWM. Throughout this analysis, I keep looking at the memory support lines. They provide excellent support. And if broken, you can use that signal also to take a low risk trade. In IWM on Friday, when these memory supports were broken, you could take very low risk short entry that ended with a significant profit. Let me explain the trade using the fine tune chart template. Let me switch to trade station to explain how you could take a very profitable short trade in IWM on Friday using the memory breakout. Why would you take the short trade in IWM and not in SPY, QQQ or DIA? Because on Friday, IWM was the weakest and you could know that right near market open. How? From the way IWM moved relative to its intraday pivot levels. Those pivot levels are available in the fine tune chart template. How could you take the trade? Let me start with the daily chart. The memory support level was at this point and also another support at this point. You would know of these two levels beforehand using the daily chart and you would be watching IWM to see if it was breaching those support levels. You would look for the breakout of the trend line using fine tune chart. Let me switch to the fine tune chart. This is the fine tune chart. And these are the two memory support levels as seen on the daily chart. On Friday, price opened here. Soon after that, early range high and low lines form. When price went below early range low, one of the daily memory support was broken but not the other one. Then on this candle, price fell below both of the daily memory support lines. 
you could take a short trade at that point putting stop just above the early range high let me clear the lines your short entry was at this point stop was at this level and from there price fell down at the lowest point you had a profit that was much larger than the risk taken and you could book at least partial profit you could close the remaining position at the end of the day i wouldn't hold on to the remaining position overnight because there was a memory support in the daily chart right near the closing price there was no point holding a short trade near support i would exit the remaining position at the end of the day the remaining position would exit at this point that also had a significant profit this is how you could take a very profitable short trade in IWM on Friday using the breakdown of the daily memory support lines. Time to decide on the market outlook because that will decide whether we are going to look for bullish or bearish trades for stocks. I looked at the four market ETFs, three of them SPY, QQQ and DIA. They are not showing enough bearish signal to take a short trade next week. The only ETF that may give a low risk short trade entry opportunity is IWM. If I am not willing to take short trades generally, am I willing to take long trades? That is also not the case. Though the weekly and daily, these two charts show that the market is continuing to be bullish and there are memory supports for SPY, QQQ and DIA nearby. There are reasons for concern and I shared some of them on my Twitter page. Let's have a Look at what I shared on Friday. This is my Twitter page. The Twitter handle is Sagannandi. That is my name. On Friday, using real-time charts, I shared this. Though on the daily weekly charts, QQQ and SPY were bullish on 5 minute interval the market breadth was very bearish and that was a reason to be cautious. Let's look at what I shared. I shared it around 12.50 pm Eastern Standard Time. What did I see? QQQ open and then after that it dropped heavily below the early range low. Same thing happened in SPY. After opening it fell heavily below early range low. And if you look at the market breadth indicators, the NASDAQ advanced decline it opened at a very high point, about 1000, and immediately started dropping. It couldn't recover any time during the day, ending the day at minus 1400. NYSE advanced decline was no better off. Started at a high point near 800 and immediately started falling, closing the day near minus 1200. A very sharp drop and that was a sharp reversal as well. 
if you look at the Nasdaq up down volume throughout the day it trended lower and lower and the same was true for NYSE up down volume throughout the day it trended lower and lower another reason for concern if you look at the tick indicator for Nasdaq and NYSE it only made a high tick right at the open but it made a large number of low ticks throughout the day some of them was very severe hitting the magenta dot this is what I shared around 12.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Did it get better after that? Let me show you the market rate at the end of Friday. This is market rate as of Friday's market close, intraday market rate. I shared the Twitter post around 12.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I have synchronized these vertical lines in all the charts to that point. NASDAQ advanced decline. Since the time I shared the tweet, didn't improve. NYSE advanced decline. Since around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time did it improve. NASDAQ up down volume fell down severely. NYSE up down volume fell down very severely. Ticks NASDAQ continued to make lower and lower ticks. NYSE also continued to make lower and lower ticks. There was some recovery near the end of the day. However, that couldn't close price above the important level for SPY of 330. This level saw very good support also on the futures, e mini futures, ES, and price closed below that. That is the reason for concern. Though the weekly daily charts for the market ETFs are looking still bullish for SPY, QQQ and DIA, the sharp reversal on Friday and very very bearish market breadth on Friday is the reason for caution. Let me show you the market breadth from another angle using the NASDAQ composite index and the NYSE composite index and this type using weekly charts. In the weekly charts, both the composite indices are still very bullish. NYSE has a memory support right below Friday's close. There were such memory supports in SPY also, QQQ also, DIA also. That is why I am not willing to take short trades, not yet. At the same time, here also I see a headwind possible reversal signal for NYC Composite Index. IWM displayed a similar headwind signal. That's why I am not ready to take long trades also. What about the weekly market trade? The NASDAQ advanced decline, NYSE advanced decline. They fell sharply, so did the up down volume. Therefore, the market rate using the weekly interval is also predominantly bearish, though the new high low is still holding up. Overall, we have to conclude based on these six market rate indicators that. Over weekly interval, it turned bearish. However, the price action is still bullish. What is the conclusion then?
not ready to take long trades, not ready to take short trades. I can say that my market view is right now neutral or indecisive. I'm going to see how the market moves next week and base my next trading decision on that. Time to look at the sector level. I'm looking at the 11 sectors across three periods. The red bars represent this week's performance. Actually previous five days, this week was four day week. However, the bar, red bar represents previous five days performance. Green bar, five days prior to the red bar and the blue bar, two weeks prior to the green bars. What happened this week? Only one sector went up, 10 sectors went down. That was a sharp deterioration of strength from previous week when the reverse was true. 10 sectors were up, only one was down. From 10 up on down, it changed to 1 up, 10 down. The down sectors, most of them went down by significant percentages. Only one sector went up, that is utilities, a defensive sector. Energy is the worst performing sector. The sector level is looking pretty bearish this week. Still, based on the memory supports in NYSE Composite Index, in SPY, in DIA, etc., I am not looking for any short trade. I am not going to look for any trade setup now. I am going to watch how the market moves next week and then decide on my next trade. And I tend to share live trading ideas on my forum that is this page sagarnandi.com. Let me review one of the recent trade ideas that I shared to explain how I apply the Q systems and techniques on live market. That was on PFNX. Scrolling up, I first shared the idea 16 days ago on 9th January. This was my 360 degrees analysis at that time at the industry level. I saw that the biotech industry was accelerating. The base column shows acceleration or deceleration, cyan color is acceleration. I saw that the biotech industry was accelerating and I was going to look for a buying opportunity in biotech. I found this stock PFNX. It had excellent earnings growth and it also had a short squeeze potential. Fundamentally, that gave me a reason to buy the stock. The last step was to look for a technical buy setup. This is how the technical looked like at that time. The weekly was bullish and in daily on this day it gave a go with flow trend following long trade setup. You can learn about the go with flow setup from the learning material on my traders forum. This is what I shared on 9th Jan. How did the trade play out? Let's look at the follow up post. I posted the follow-up on 15th Jan. I suggested the entry based on the go with flow setup at this point. The initial profit target would be upper boundary. That was hit on this day and you exit at least partial profit. 
how would you decide whether to hold partial position or not? My approach is to hold partial position if the technical fundamental and the industry all were bullish. If they were weak, then you would exit full position. If they were all strong, you would continue to hold partial position, trying to let profit run. This was a go with flow trend following long setup, where you could take the trade at this price point, exit the trade with profit at this price point. While I shared the exit of PFNX on 15th Jan, on that day, I posted a chart on Twitter on another biotech, Excel. The ticker symbol is EXEL. I came to know about this stock from somebody in a trader's forum. And he was thinking of buying it. I looked at the chart and I saw that at that time, the weekly was bullish, the daily was going up. However, remember the memory support resistance lines? I put a lot of weight on them. As of that day, price was right at the memory resistance in both weekly and daily. And price was already overbought in the daily chart shown by the stretch band indicator. That would be my exit point. That was my exit point. Where could be the entry point? The entry point could be at this point, again using the go with flow trend following long trade set. While others were looking to enter the trade, I was exiting my long trade in this stock Excel, if I had taken the long trade on this day. And in this case, I would exit full position because on my charts, it was right at the resistance point. I would not try to hold on to partial position. How did the stock move after that? Let's look at the live charts. This is Excel as of Friday's close. On this day, while others were, at least some other people, not everybody, somebody was looking to buy it, I was suggesting closing of the long trade taken on this day. And I suggested the full position closing because there were memory resistance lines in both daily and weekly. That was very useful because from then price fell down very sharply. That is how you can use the memory trend lines. I explained using IWM you can use the breakout of memory lines to initiate profitable trades. And you can also use the memory lines to exit your profitable trades. It can be used both for entry as well as for exit. Why don't we look at Netflix and look at any memory support resistance it may have to decide what to do now using live charts. Netflix, NFLX. In the weekly chart, after displaying the headwind reversal signal, it has steadily gone up. Looking back, the previous headwind reversal signal also led to a significant price move upward. In the daily price is going up. Like I shared in the Excel chart on 15th Jan, you can see now Netflix is at memory resistance both in daily and weekly. In fact, on this day, price went up right after earnings. And that probably made many people bullish and they may be looking to buy the stock next week. They also saw that on Friday, though the market fell down, Netflix closed slightly higher. That 
may also be making them bullish on Netflix. However, because the memory resistance lines are there both in weekly and daily, Q traders will not take a long position in Netflix now. Instead, if Netflix drops to this memory support level and reverses from there, they may look for a low risk entry at that point. For more similar meaningful stock and market analysis, you may keep an eye on the YouTube channel Trading Profitably on my traders forum saganandi.com and my Twitter page saganandi. All of these are open to the public. That's all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.